You guys ready for some riveting Gwenpool math? In about two weeks, I'll be entering the labyrinth for the first time, and I'll be doing it live, of course, so hopefully many of you will join me for that. But until then, I need to continue training and testing things with Gwenpool here, so that I can kind of lower the total amount of embarrassment that I'll be facing on that live stream. I'm sure there's going to be no way to eliminate it, but the more prepared I am, the better I'll do, of course. So, today's test is all about figuring out exactly where Gwenpool's damage is coming from. What percentage of it is coming from her bleeds, and what percentage of it is coming from just the raw physical damage of when she's pummeling her enemies in the face. And I'm sure if I was smart enough, I can probably just look at her stat sheet here and come up with some kind of formula to figure all that out. But honestly, I'm not that smart, so uh, my method of figuring this out is going into my video editor here. And I have a fight loaded up here against Winter Soldier, and I'm actually going to be testing out two different synergy teams during this. Um, so I'm going through, frame by frame, to see exactly where the damage is coming from. There you go, first hit, 3571. Okay, so I've, I've uh, written that down on a little spreadsheet that I'll show you in just a moment. Second hit, 683. Okay, let's keep going here. I've, I'm not going to show you all 83 hits that it took to uh, drop Winter Soldier here. Um, but I just want to show you that I'm also calculating every time a bleed triggers and figuring out that damage as well. So, let's head on over to the spreadsheet. The two different fights that I looked at both ended in 83 hits, one of them for a mutant synergy team and one of them for a bleed synergy team. And if they both ended in the same number of hits, how do we know which one's actually better? Well, I'll get to that at the end of this as well. Uh, the numbers in gray here are just regular hits versus the numbers in yellow that are critical hits. The numbers in blue are the uh, level 3 specials that apply that nice armor break. The numbers in red here are critical hits on the level 2 special. The number in orange is the regular hit on the level 2 special. And the bolded numbers down here is when Assassin kicks in. As you can see, the, uh, the damage definitely does increase. I only have one point into Assassin. The only time I ever rounded any of these numbers or, or changed the numbers from, ex from the exact number in the recording is the final hit. In both cases, Winter Soldier was barely hanging on by a thread, and I crit Winter Soldier for about eight or 9,000, and there's no way that he had that much life left, so I kind of just chopped that down, estimated to about 2,000 damage, or 2,000 life that Winter Soldier had left. And I'll show you the synergy teams that I was working with. So for the mutant side, I was working with Storm, Magneto, Wolverine, and Cyclops, pretty standard for the mutant synergy team. Although I was using the wrong version of Cyclops for this team, I should have been using the red one, not the blue one. And I was also using only a 3-star Wolverine, as I don't have a 4-star one. So this, this could actually be slightly better than what it's, what it's showing here. Um, the Bleed Synergy team I was working with, Black Panther, Civil War, Hawkeye, Falcon, and War Machine, which was the best Bleed Synergy team that I could personally throw together. I don't know if a better one exists out there, but uh, after playing around, just throwing all different kinds of combinations of champions around, this is the best that I can come up with. Uh, which gave a nice balance of crit, bleed, and crit damage while also adding in some physical resistance penetration with uh, Falcon's little uh, extra synergies that he has there. Um, uh, doesn't matter for this particular case, as Winter Soldier does not have any physical resistance, but, um, you know, maybe in some other kind of fight, and in some other kind of scenario, maybe it will matter, so I wanted to just uh, include that here as well. Um, there's also a tiny bit of mastery difference, as uh, I had one extra point in lesser precision for the, the mutant team, but I've already added that on to the 450 crit total here, so that's already calculated in there. And then I also had two extra points in Pierce when I was using the mutant teams. However, Pierce is 100% useless after you apply the level 3 armor break, so um, it doesn't really matter much. It only matter for the first few crits that I landed. If we go into her stat sheet, I'll show you exactly why that is. Her level 3 special here uh, applies a 6150 armor break, and I don't know of any enemies in the game that have that much armor. I'm sure they exist with some kind of special nodes out there, but um, for most enemies that you come across, you're going to be reducing their armor to zero, as you cannot reduce them beyond zero in the current update of the game, uh, which means masteries such as Pierce and Pure Skill are 100% useless if you have that armor break applied. You can't always keep the armor break up 100% of the time, um, if, for those of you who don't know how it works, when her armor break is about to expire, if you have a bleed on the opponent, uh, it will consume one of those bleeds to extend the duration of uh, the armor break. So, uh, in some fights you can keep it up the, the entire time, and some fights you cannot. Alright, let's go to the final results now. The differences between synergies was I got an extra 11% attack and 65 crit damage rating with the mutant team, and 15 crit rating and 25% extra bleed for the bleed synergy team. 
Now, if you're doing Labyrinth of Legends, you do need this 11% attack to extend the duration of the Enrage Timer. Um, but I did want to, uh, you know, again, just find the best possible bleed team that I can. And if I needed to, maybe find some kind of combination that uh, allowed for uh, the extra attack and bleed if I felt like it was worth it. The total amount of bleed damage that was dealt to Winter Soldier was about 20% 20, 20 of my damage for the Mutant Team and 23 for the Bleed Soldier Team. And honestly, I thought the numbers were going to be much higher here. Uh, for some reason, I had it in my mind that I was doing like 40% of my damage was, was coming from bleeds. Um, or maybe even higher than that. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, I thought a, a much larger portion of it actually came from bleeds versus just the physical hits and crits. But if you see here, the regular regular light attack and medium attack, physical crits and hits, actually made up the bulk of my damage, 55 and 57% of my damage. And th that's not even including the special damage, which also made up about 25 and 20% of my total damage, which is just physical as well. This is not uh, dependent on bleed at all. Um, and I, I thought that this was kind of crazy, actually, to see. I, I couldn't believe that 25% of my damage came from my special abilities, um, but it makes sense if you look at the final numbers at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, in, in the bolded numbers, again, is in Assassin range, and my level 2 special crit on both of the hits of it, and the first hit was 11,500 damage, and the second hit was 45,500 damage, so we're talking about 57,000 total damage just on her level 2 ability. Now you're not going to be able to see that in a normal situation, in a normal everyday fight, because this does have the level 3 armor break applied before it. So yeah, it, it, you are going to need a longer duration fight to have something like this um, happen, to have these two things line up to allow your level 2 special to do that much damage. But still, it's, it's a large amount of damage, and it's all physical, it's not, it's not bleed damage, so this would happen against uh, bleed immune targets as well. Um, or almost, I should say. Because against bleed immune targets, you're not able to keep up the duration of your armor break. Um, I had about a 50% uptime on the armor break at best when I was using the um, when I was when I was fighting champions that were immune to bleed, and that was in Realm of Legends. That was against Vision, who took 187 hits versus the 83 against uh, you know Winter Soldier that can bleed. So it actually took more than double the amount of hits, um, you know, going up against Vision. Which, uh, you know, it's, it, you're not just missing out on that 20% bleed damage, you're missing out mostly on the damage from not being able to have 100% uptime on that level 3 armor break. If you notice, the damage difference is actually pretty severe here. Uh, this is a medium attack crit after the armor break for 82.53 versus beforehand it's only 38.57. And the regular hits, they they go up even even better than that. They almost triple, um, going from 722 to 1950 and 1127 to a little over 3,000. So um, the damage is is going up more than double with that armor break on, and in some cases, well more than double. Um, so if you're fighting a bleed immune champion, it's not that you're missing out on the bleed damage. I mean that's part of it too. This is not a, an insignificant amount of damage, it's still, still a pretty good amount of damage, but um, the, the bigger damage loss is that you're not able to extend at the duration of that level 3 special. Uh, and as a result, you're going to be using your level 3 special more, you're not going to be firing off your level 2 specials, and all that stuff kind of factors in. Um, and at the end of the day, yeah, you are going to be doing a significant amount of less damage, you're going to be doing less than half the damage. However, I still think that Gwenpool is good enough to fight these... Uh, bleed immune targets. Uh, I'm not going to be bringing in any kind of uh, alternative champions to, to fight the few bleed immunes in there. I'm just going to power through and understand that um, a regular enemy, if they take about 300 hits to take down, a bleed immune is only going to take about, I don't know, maybe about 700 hits. Um, if I'm boosting, maybe, you know, a bit less than that. But it's, it's going to be manageable. It's going to be manageable. I'm not going to bring in a separate champion just to deal with them. Now, which of these two teams is better for situations outside of Labyrinth? If they both took 83 hits to bring down Winter Soldier, how can we tell that? Well, we can look at the RNG involved. Um, I, I also calculated the amount of crits here, that's the total amount of crits, and I only calculated 82 numbers here since uh, there was one level 3 special, and level 3 specials cannot crit. So out of the 82 uh, attacks that were able to crit, 49% of them did when I was using the Mutant Team, and 60% of them did using the Bleed Team. That's a massive difference, actually, and that's not just coming from this 15 crit rating. There's, there's no way um, that I'm critting 11% more of the time here uh, just because of that 15 crit rating. That's, there, there's no way that that's... Uh, it's just RNG, basically. So, 
the only way that the Bleed Synergy team was able to keep up with the Mutant one is the fact that I did luck out and just land a significant amount more crits versus the regular hits of the Mutant one. Now, there was actually a little bit more uh, bleed application, slightly, slightly bit more, with the mutant team versus the uh, bleed synergy team, but honestly, it's not going to make up enough uh, amount of difference um, to say that uh, it balances out the RNG that was involved here. Um, e even when you factor in the special damage here, uh, it's, it really does come out in, in mutant's favor, even if uh, you know, I reduce the, the, the total damage here um, by, by the 27,000, those extra nine crits made up for that, and then some. Now, all that said, the mutant team, it, it, it was better, but not that much better that uh, this team wouldn't be, you know, inconceivable to use somewhere else. If you needed to bring in a Hawkeye, for example, but you still wanted to use Gwenpool, um, I don't know, I don't know where, what kind of a situation you'd be in where you'd want that, or where you wanted War Machine or something like that, um, then this Synergy team is not bad. Uh, or maybe if you needed that physical penetration, um, then yeah, this Synergy team is not bad by any means, but... Uh, in my eyes, the Mutant Team is the clear winner for pretty much every situation of the game. Um, and this 25% this extra bleed is not the biggest deal. Um, the bleeds, they do a lot of damage, but they're mainly there to extend the duration of the debuffs that I'm applying. And there's no synergy that it can extend the duration of my bleeds, which would then make it easier to extend the, uh, the duration of... Uh, the debuffs. Really, the the only way to extend the duration of your bleeds is from deep wounds, which I did have maxed out in both of these cases, of course. So, there you have it, guys. I will only be taking Gwenpool for every single fight in Labyrinth of Legends, even against those pesky bleed immune champions, and it's going to be a struggle against those guys, but it's not going to be it's not going to be that big of a deal, I don't think. Um, but in any case, hopefully you, you enjoyed the amount of effort that it took to get these results as it was several hours of just, you know, counting the amount of damage as I'm going through frame by frame in the videos. But I think it's all worth it because I, hopefully it's going to help me meet my goal of getting through Labyrinth of Legends, at least on the easy path, with only having to spend 1,000 units on top of all the stuff that I have stashed away. And we'll find out soon enough as, uh, once again, I will be doing it live, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see uh, if I can actually pull it off or not as uh, I'm, I'm definitely not the best fighter in this game, but uh, I, I think I can do it. Uh, in any case, I'm out for now, guys. I will see you in the next video. Take care.